What was your favorite among the th things the we did today? Welding. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. It was pretty fun doing heavy duty stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how heavy you can do it. Um, did you like the using like the big red machine there for stick welding or the battery welding? Battery. Yeah. Um, Why do you like that better? Just because of, I don't know. I just like the batteries. How how you can use batteries. <laughs> welding. Yeah, push it in nice and close. Good job. So how many how many batteries would you need to do a good solid weld? Three. Like what we were doing? Yeah, three batteries worth. What is an important thing for, for making that work, doing the battery welding? Um, the right like, um, electrical connection. Uh-huh. Um, what about that electrical connection? Make it like all Looking them all in the right place and really tight on and stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the trick for getting them to be a good solid connection? You use that the copper wire. That yeah. Loose stuff. Loose copper wire or a copper braiding, a yeah. braided copper strap or something. Put it around the battery post and clamp onto it really tight. And then you can even back it up by clamping a spring clamp or a vice grip or whatever you have over top of the battery clamp to make it even tighter. Yeah. If you were going to pretend that you're starting a stick weld on this metal right here, how do you do the, how do you get the arc started? You go like that. Yep, you perfect. Strike it like a match. Yep. Strike it like a match and you keep like that. Nice. And then about, um, how far do you want to stay away from the metal when you're actually welding? Eight to finish. Yeah. So that. Yep which is pretty much because that rod is going to keep going shorter and shorter yeah, so, you're so you're pretty much pushing it in the entire time yeah nice so how about Hattie can you tell me your favorite thing that you did today between the battery welding and the stick welding and the um, flux core wire welding and plasma cutting I like thin metal thin metal yeah mm -hmm. What part of that did you enjoy the best? Um, when you had to flatten the uh, the surface to make it look like it was just that's just how it was in the beginning. Uh huh. Nice. Yep. Grind it down nice and smooth. You did a good job of that. Push on down close to it. There you go, even closer. Push it right on down close there. There we go. When you're preparing to weld auto body panels like this car hood, it's important to strip the paint off before you begin welding. That will help you get a good solid electrical connection for your welding process. It would also help avoid all the nasty paint fumes and smoke while you're doing the welding. I've tried different methods of stripping the paint like using an angle grinder with a flap disc. That takes a long time. There are other abrasive discs you could use, um, but it still takes quite a bit of of effort and time to get it off plus you wear out your discs but check this out I just discovered another option using a heat gun to heat up the paint and then using a scraper or a putty knife to scrape the the loosened paint off just heat the area I'm, I'm working on a section right here that I want to strip off in preparation for welding so I'm just gonna heat the area I'm gonna kind of preheat it a little bit over the whole area and then I'll focus on one spot and just keep heating it until the paint starts to bubble a little bit it'll kind of boil off the surface slightly you can see it discoloring slightly and the the metal is also oil canning it's it's I'm heating up this area so it's expanding 
and there's nowhere for the metal to go out so it has to come up or down it's already kind of a curved surface this way so it, it naturally bows up like this when it's heated that should be okay though because it so far as I've tested it's pretty much calmed back down once I um, took the heat away so there's some bubble starting there so just take the heat the uh, scraper to it with a putty knife You'd want to be more careful if you're doing this on a real um, auto body panel that you're actually using. This is just my uh, test piece for our, our intermediate class to learn how to weld super thin metal. Um, so this might not, we'll see, how it, we'll see how it settles out once it cools down. But for me, for now, and for this project, this is a great way to get the paint off very quickly and easily. I'm using a tarp drop cloth down here so I can just gather up all the stripped paint and put it right in the trash. I found that I could work a lot faster by holding some by using something else to hold the heat gun and then I can scrape with the other hand and just hold hold down the metal with my other and then I can just keep moving it along and scraping the different areas. So after I did the heat gun, I discovered that this abrasive disc works really well for getting down to the final uh, clean metal. You could do the whole thing with this, but it makes a lot of dust. And so it's really nice to start out with the heat gun, the heat gun and get the majority of the junk, the paint off, and then finish it off with this abrasive disc. This is a polycarbonate abrasive wheel from Harbor Freight, it's item number 94017. Yeah, so just start on the outside and just kind of go around it and then work your way in. And if it burns through, then you can just pause for a second and then start again and just kind of try to build the metal back up again. So the weld is really smooth. This is Daniel's, your second weld, helping fill in the little hole that was left behind from your first go at it. And you did a perfect job just going, you kind of started here and did a zigzag while you moved across from this side to that side. And it was, yeah, set up just right and you did a good job of moving it at the right speed and keeping the gun nice and down close. So it tied in well to the surrounding metal and did a really nice weld. All right, signing our work on the car hood. Pretty soon we'll fill the whole thing with welds and signatures. Oh, my goodness. Daniel's there. Um, How about some tips for, um, for doing stick welding? What kind of things would you want to remember for how to stick weld? Stay close to it. It's kind of hard because you think you're close to it, but you're not. Uh huh. It looks like it. Yep. So four molars and slow. Okay. I'm going to hold it down a little bit. Hold it down about like that. Yeah, there we go. Down even more. Down even more. Slower. There we go. So right in here is where I was kind of holding it down and holding it back a little slower. Welding. There you go. Oh no. 
little bit slower and make sure you're down far enough. There you go. If it, if it sticks, you can, you can just wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Yeah, there you go. If you're doing a, running a wire feed welder with uh, flux core wire instead of solid wire, Obviously, I, I just left the gas turned off. I could have taken it, the hose off the machine, but I just turned it off at the, at the uh, cylinder. So you'll switch over to your hollow, hollow core wire, then you have to switch your polarity. So the, the, this style, you, uh, the chart here says this is for flux core, and that arrangement is for solid wire. And, and then you switch the roller wheel over to, usually you end up using a grooved slot instead of a smooth slot there for uh, hollow core and putting a little piece of paper towel with a clip like this around the wire see all the junk that that collected basically get it so it's um, it'll slide back and forth pretty pretty easily but is still wrapped on the wire so that way as the wire spools through it'll wipe it automatically and you won't end up with all that junk going into your liner and clogging it up so you have to change it. How do you prevent birds nesting in when you're switching out wire in a MIG welder? Make it nice and straight. Uh-huh. And make sure all the things are off, all the parts of the welder things off. Uh-huh. The, the torch yeah, tip? The torch tip. Yep. Nice. Yeah, you're doing a good job keeping the distance. <laughs>